to be kind of an unboxing and a uh, put together and a review of the Senex Tools model 8516 hydraulic shop stool. Packaged pretty well. A lot of zip ties. I will say the seat itself has got some weight to it, so that's a good sign. This hardware looks pretty impressive. And like I said, this has got some weight to it, that's good. Everything is just kind of uh, linked together with these zip ties. Get to that in a minute. This is the hydraulic portion. It's pretty substantial too as far as weight. So let's see what's in the boxes. Plate, and also this has some weight to it and some thickness. So I can tell already I'm probably going to be pretty happy with this. I had purchased another one and returned it. It was through a Walmart, but it was a second dairy seller. And it was horribly cheap and real undersized. This is the backrest. This is pretty much everything taken out of the box. Now I'll see how well it fits together. In addition to all of the nuts and bolts, it also gives you the tools you need to assemble. Step one is to attach the legs with the, the four hex head uh, bolts. And Kind of what secures it in place is that black plate goes inside the um, chromed one. Pretty simple, it just fits right in there. It's our locking nuts. It says to install but not tighten them. So I'll leave them just a little bit loose. So the reason you don't want these too tight is you want to be able to get this in. So what I I do is just tilt it on an angle like that to slip it in, and now I should be able to slide it in place and put in the bolts. Follow that up with the upper ring, and it goes on the outside. kind of snapped into place also and then your last four connectors once this is in place now you can go back and secure all the bolts nice and tight Next is the hydraulic plunger. There must be an error in the instructions as it says the orange side up and there is no orange unless they're talking about this warning. But I would guess you put it so that this is readable. And that just slides in place. Next you place the seat on the pedestal and sit on it so that you know everything is in place and properly seated, I assume. Pretty stable to start with. For the backrest, you insert both of these, and there's one of those little spring-loaded catch. I'm assuming that's so if you wanted, you could um, push these in and lower the, the backrest to the bottom. That would be my guess. I might have put the backrest on too soon. I think it was actually the uh, last step. But it really doesn't matter because now these are sliding here and I can adjust them. have to loosen these. And I could adjust this to my taste. Let's go back and re-tighten all your nuts and bolts. It is uh, a pretty hefty weight to it. I'm happy with that. Next test is the spin test.
pretty smooth. And I could get dizzy doing this after a while. So far so good. Raising it all the way to its highest level is borderline too tall for me. My legs are not hitting the uh, footrest very well. I can go up to the, the next ones, the smaller ones. So that would work. Uh, no wobbles to it. It's good and solid. I'm happy with it. And we'll see as time goes on. It does revolve smoothly. The bearings are nice and quiet. There's no noise whatsoever. And it feels good. And uh, at my weight, it's a good test for it. So the chair is rated for 250 pounds. I don't weigh quite that much. But uh, as you can tell, I eat well. So anyway, that's it for this episode of Boiler Dan 1, where I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. Keep watching.